They would, and this is not like, this is what they would say too. Dionysus was entering your body when you drank this, when you drank the wine. And Demeter Stick was entering your body when you drank the grain, the, the beer. So this Kaikion mix was basically having these gods enter your body, just like the Christians are doing with the Eucharist. Wow, dude. Since we're on the topic of Marcus Magus and this purple stuff, right? I probably should give a little rundown because this sounds like this is so out there. Wow, Christians don't do this stuff. That's crazy. This must be not true. But if you actually look at what these early Christian groups were doing, you'll see that this is not that out of place. I mentioned the Barbarites, obviously, the one with that crazy gospel with Mary drinking the load. And um, <laughs> there's another group called the Nasines. These are my favorite ones. Second century, they operated in Asia Minor, modern day Turkey. And they um, they had this, they were followed, they were led by a guy named the Nasin preacher. We don't know his real name. He, the only, only sources say he's called the Nasin preacher. Never says his name. And he, he was basically equating Jesus with other gods like Dionysus, Addis, Adonis, Osiris, Pan. So he had a hymn. It was the, it was the Orphic, or no, Homeric hymn to Addis. This was an ancient Homeric age hymn mm-hmm. dedicated to the god Addis. And in this hymn, the, wh- whoever wrote it, I don't know if it was Homer or attributed to Homer, it's called the Homeric hymn. But in this hymn, basically what happens is the it starts off with, you are the son of Kronos, great uh, son of Rhea, Dionysus, Bacchus, Addis. They call you, you know, in Egypt, they call you Osiris. In Phrygia, they call you Pappus. In Samothrace, they call you Adamus. And it goes through and it lists all these sons of God characters. Mm-hmm. And they're basically saying these are all the same God. And the Nasin preacher took this hymn and, it ch- and then changed it to Jesus. So the Nasins believe that all of these sons of God characters, Dionysus, Addis, Osiris, Adonis, are all prophecies or, or prefigurations of the Christ. He also talked about how Christ is the fulfillment of the Eleusinian mystery. So that's in the second century. Christ is the f- fulfillment of the Eleusinian what is that, mystery. What does that mean? That's what he says in, in his, in the, the, whatever fragment we have. The, the, so what I'm referring to in this, so particular, a guy named Hippolytus, one of the great church fathers, Hippolytus, he's a saint, Saint Hippolytus. He wrote a text called Against Heresies. And in this text, he has a whole chapter about this one guy. And he preserves these texts. And one, one of the things he quotes from saying is this him saying Christ is the fulfillment of the Eleusinian mysteries. So does that, is he saying Christ is being high on drugs? <sighs> Could be. That's one, that's one, that's one way to, th- to Christ is a DMT trip. <laughs> Could be. I mean, then that, that's the thing. These Nasins were into that stuff. They were into the frenzies. They were into the Bacchic mania. They were into the whole prophesying and speaking in tongues and getting, getting, getting the spirit, getting wild up like that. There was another group called the Ophites. Mm-hmm. By the way, Nasin means snake people. So the Ophites are the Nasins down in Egypt, and the Nasins are the Ophites in Asia Minor, Turkey. They're they're the same group. They're, okay. They're snake Ophite Of Ophite means snake people in Greek. Nasins means snake people in Hebrew. So they're just, they're, they're both they're both a snake people, but they're Christians. They believe in Christ. Um, the Sethians are another group that believe in this doctrine that Christ is the serpent in the garden that came to save Eve from this god Yaltaboeth and said eat this fruit and attain gnosis that's what they that's what that's that's their doctrine so that's why you can see why it became heresy right right but this is what they believed in and a lot of christians believed this too it wasn't just this random there was like 10 different sects in Donald Christ was the serpent serpent in the garden and then so to this is from Adam no, not no, not to save them from Yaldabaoth, the god in the garden that was keeping them there. He said they're saying, they're saying you're in a prison planet, and to get to get free, you have to eat this apple, or eat the fruit. It doesn't say apple, it just mm-hmm. says fruit, and attain gnosis. And the idea is you'll save mankind by eating the gnosis, by eating the apple. Your generations coming after you 
will keep getting smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter until they can become gods. So they're they're taking that the opposite way, where the the original thing was Adam and Eve fell from paradise. This is saying they attained gnosis and can become like gods, and basically like every generation that goes by attains more knowledge than the generation before it. And we're on our way to becoming it's like humans are on their way to becoming gods at some point in the future, mm. which could be true. Maybe one day we become immortal. Who knows? I got a question. I got a question. Yeah. So, uh, so um, <clears throat> you said that these uh, uh, what are they? the the, the Nassim people, these these folks right here. Yeah, yeah. Oh they, no, no, not, that, that's Nassim. It's N A S S or N A A N A N A A S S N A A S S E N E S. Um, yeah, not seen. That's it. The scenes. Anyway, so you said that they're 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 called the snake people. That's right? your logo of your channel. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's it. That's that's, that's, a, that's a breakfast. I'll get to him in a minute. I'll get to, I'll get to okay. what that is in a minute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So go ahead. so Hillman was was talking about how uh, there was this this uh, this drug that used a, a lot of snake, uh, snake venom. Yes, venom. it was an antidote. Yeah, these people are snake handlers, so they're obviously they're like they're. Cr- Oh no, I'm sorry. It wasn't an antidote. The antidote was something else. The so, Christ no, was the antidote, antidote is a venom too. Oh yeah. really? Yeah. There's dotes okay. and antidotes, and they're both venoms. Okay, got yeah. it. But I, I, I can. I, I mean, I see a relationship there, but I don't know if that is true. I was just curious if that is. No, a that that would be a because these they're known. That's what Hippolytus says. See how see Hippolytus of Rome right there. Mm-hmm. He says that these people are snake handlers. So they're mm-hmm. they're known for carrying around snakes, doing things with snakes, and using snakes for their rituals. So it wouldn't be a stretch to say that they're doing some sort of using the venoms for whatever. Um, but the Ophites are the ones in Egypt. The Sethians are also agreeing with them in the doctrine that Christ is the serpent. And this is how they argue it. And when Moses is in the desert, this is actually backed up by the Gospels, believe it or not. This is not that heretical that you think, and I'll explain why. In in, Gen- in Exodus, Moses, when they're in the when they're in the wilderness, Moses holds up a serpent on a rod when they're all getting when they're all thirsty and dying. I don't know if you know this pe- oh, passage. Oh yeah. And he says, just yes. look at the serpent and it'll save you. And so what they were doing, they would go up and look at this brazen serpent, and it would save them. Then in the Gospel of John, there's a passage that says, it's from Jesus' own lips. He says, just as Moses lifts up the serpent, the Son of Man must be lifted up. He's saying, I am this serpent. So these these Christian groups are saying, no, we're not heretics. This is from John's gospel. This is from the gospel. That's what they're saying. Mm. That's how they're arguing it. Saying, and, and and it's interesting because it, the story about uh, Moses being in the desert and they're all thirsty, that's what the snake venom does. It makes it you feel like... It saves them. Yeah. Well, that's oh, the, yeah, the effect yeah, yeah, yeah. of the snake the venom. That's another way to... That's another crazy interpretation. It makes you super thirsty. thirsty. They're all thirsting and it's the serpent. Yeah, I love that. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, look up just as Moses, the son of, uh, type in just as Moses lifted up the serpent. Just type that in and then I'll show you the verse I'm talking about. There you go. There you go. See, look at John 3, 14. Yep. This is from the gospel of John. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. So him, so Christ on the cross is the serpent in the wilderness. The son of man. That means that's another title for Jesus. Oh, really? Yeah. So he's basically, he's saying, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, I will be lifted up on the cross. He's basically saying, I am the serpent. It's not a, like, you can't say that's wrong. Like, I'm just saying, this is what these Christians believe. What does that mean? He's the, he's the, he's the symbol of wisdom. The snake was the symbol of knowledge and wisdom to the future. To this day, the medical symbol that you see in every hospital is what? Oh yeah, the snake. Look up the symbol of the Asclepius. Asclepius What's medical it, symbol. Is it like a snake and a shield or something? It's a snake on a rod. A rod? Yeah. Asclepius. Oh, it. yes, that. That's that's the symbol of this of salvation. Whoa. That's from the ancient Dude. Greeks. That's the that's the click, that's the ambulance logo right yes. there. Look, the look at there's one? a cross on and everything. Click on the blue one. Yeah, look, that's that's the Chiro. Yeah, I never really I mean look, I know it's Chi, Chiro. C H I R H O. C H I R H O. See? Oh. Wait. What there, is this? That's just a. Oh, oh that's, that's the very similar. The is exactly the, the same. Yeah. There's no snake here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but what I'm saying is they're saying that Christ is that snake on the cross. And so the medical symbol that we have to this day 
not only comes from this this motif, but it predates that. It goes into the the Greeks. This rod, of, look up rod of Asclepius. If you can look that up real quick. Asclepius is rod. Yeah, you can just type in Asclepius rod. Yeah. That'll work. Type in rod. Yeah. See. Okay. That's an ancient medical symbol of the Greeks. And so the, the Christians are just drawing from this motif. That's that's what Moses is doing in the desert too. He's wrong. They're 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 applying the motif to Moses. It's the symbol of medicine. So it, this does this does play into Amon. So being, that may mean Jesus was medicine. Christ is medicine. Christ is medicine. He's salvation. Christ is drugs. Yeah, dude. Holy Isn't that crazy? Sh- wow. That's Asclepius. By the way, Asclepius is another dying and rising god too. He gets killed and rises up to heaven. Hmm. He's another, so it's this very common motif in the ancient Greek world for for gods to die and resurrect. Very common. Addis Addis gets killed by castrating himself, and then he resurrects. There's two versions. One of them says a, a tree sprang up where he stood, re- representing his resurrection. And the other version, he actually resurrects as a human. What was the term for people who castrated themselves again? Uh, galley, galloy. And why why were people castrating themselves? They're becoming initiated into the mysteries of the great mother and there's a lot of people who think that steve i can hear you crunching the great mother (laughs) the great mother religion was in close proximity to these nasines because they would say the nasine hymns one of the nasine hymns says christ is the son of the great mother so there's a lot of overlap playing osiris is another one of these dying and rising gods osiris is killed by set torn apart and then it, just like in the Gospels, where there's two women at the tomb at the end, it's two women, Isis and Nephthys, who find the body of Osiris and bring it together at the end, and resurrect him. And then in another, and, and then in the uh, in the Adonis story, two women are at the are there for Adonis when he dies. Adonis is another rising dying. This is like a common thread that we see. It's always God dies, two women mourn for him, and then he resurrects. It's like this weird thing that keeps happening, and it happens in the Gospels too. It's Mary and Martha. So it's like, what's going on with that? What does that mean? It might be some astro theology stuff. I don't really know. <laughs> but it's, and then even back in the ancient Babylonian story with the god Demutsi, when, when Demutsi dies, he is mourned over by the women. And then Ishtar descends into hell. It's called Kurnugi, it's the ancient Babylonian mm-hmm. word for hell. She goes down there. It says in the text, in the translation that we have from from um, Samuel Noah Kramer, he translates Sumerian, and it says that Ishtar was down in Hayes hell for three days and three nights, dead, transfixed on a on a uh, th- I think it says wood. It doesn't say crucify, but it mm-hmm. says that she was transfixed on a piece of wood, dead as a corpse for three days, and it says three nights, and then the god Enki sprinkles the water of life on her and she resurrects and brings the, the dead up with her mm. it's like that like just lines up perfectly with, with what jesus when they said when jesus was dead he descended into hades for three days and then resurrects so this motif of a god and then check this out this is where it gets crazy where, when is easter march in march april springtime right it depends on the what's called the first full moon after the spring equinox so it could happen in march it could happen in april depends on the whenever the first full moon happens after the spring equinox which is march 22nd i think okay so after march 22nd whenever the first full moon hits it's the next sunday that's it so they it's it's, you're already like that's some sounds like some pagan shit they're basing it off the stars and the moon and stuff yeah but we find out that in the ancient world before christianity uh was even existed there was these two these two big fe- three big festivals actually one of them is called the adonia the other one's called the hilaria mm-hmm. and then there's another hilaria for osiris so down in egypt they celebrate the hilaria it's always in march april same with the one in rome for Addis. always in march april and then the adonia is always in march april and they're all all of them are celebrating the death of a god, either Adonis, Addis, or Osiris. They're always um, weeping over a god and then rejoicing over his resurrection. And this one in particular uh, um, passed down to us from a guy named Arnobius of Sicca. He says that the Hilaria festival was a week long, 
starts on March 15th and it ends on March oh, 20 it ends on the March it, it, I think it, either March 15th or 22nd anyway it's right at the spring equinox right where Easter is same week as Easter I think it ends on March 30th or something and um, he says there's a day of burial where they take a pine tree that represents the god they bury in, this is all before the first century. This is all first century BC, before Christianity. Okay. They they take the they take a pine tree and they bury it in the dirt, and then they mourn for two days. On the third day, it's called the day of rejoicing. There's a day of blood, and that's the day where they castrate themselves, and the initiates would become priests of the, the great mother. So At, Addis dies from castration. The new priest, every year during this Easter festival, basically. It's yeah. called the Hilaria. Hilaria. They were, they were, it was called the Day of Blood. It was the day after the Day of Burial, where they would weep, they would get a new initiates, they would castrate themselves, and they'd become priests. They would wear women's clothing and everything. And on the third day, it's called the Hilaria. Hilaria means rejoice in Latin. The third day is the Day of Rejoicing, and they would, resur- and they would rejoice of the resurrection of Addis. This happens at the same week as Easter. Oh my God, dude! So if you're if people so the people, Easter tradition people, comes way before Christianity, way before, way before Osiris, Addis, Adonis, the Dionysus, they all have their own resurrection festivals, and they're always mm. they're, and three of three out of three out of four of and those. You said are they would bury at the same week as Easter, right? But and they would bury a pine tree. They would bury a pine tree, or no, uh, a pine cone. Uh, pine tree, yeah, pine tree. A oh, pine, tree. pine tree, yes. And that was supposed to re- represent a sort of the god, dead or god Addis, the dead god Addis. We'll look it up. It's even on Wikipedia. Can you look that up? Yeah. The Hilaria yeah. Festival, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is all known stuff. By the way, Christian scholars fight this. They'll say it's a coincidence. You'll, <laughs> oh, you'll say, really? you'll say this, this, there's no way this doesn't influence Christianity. They say it doesn't. They uh, fight. They're this. saying no. There's no way this influences Christianity. That's what they say. I'm a hilarious link. link. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's all in the link. link. There you go. Hilaria. So if you go, if you want to read that for a second. The Hilaria, Latin for the cheerful one, a term derived from the borrowed adjective ancient Greek, or the borrowed adjective. March equinox. See? That's the great mother, Kybele. The March equinox to our honor Kybele. Now, if you go down, if you go down to, it's going to say like the days. If you keep going, I'll tell you when to stop. Festival structure. Oh, yeah. This might be. Here it is. Look, look, look. March 15th. Read, read. This is the whole schedule. The first festival, the first festival, can be tentatively reconstructed with the days of the festival literally translated as follows: fifteenth of March. The reed entered. Its exact significance is uncertain. The reeds may refer to the riverbanks where Addis was exposed as a child and rescued by Sibylle. The nine-day period of abstinence from bread. Like, like, like they do. Oh, like, like how they do. Um. Uh, what are, right before Easter is Lent. It's like, it's like right. Lent. Right, right. Only milk was permitted to drink. Yeah. 22nd of March, the tree entered. A pine, pine tree, tree is felled. Told a you. tree is set up at the Temple of Sibylle. The trunk is wrapped in wool and its branches decked with wreaths and violets. It's like a, it's like a Christmas tree. Right. <laughs> oh, whoa. <laughs> Look, it's like a Christmas tree. Now keep going. A pine tree is felled. The tree is set up at the Temple of Sibylle. The trunk is wrapped in wool and its branches decked in wreaths and violets. Yeah. And they would put they would put little little st- toy addises on top of it like an angel. This is what they said in the sentence horses. Look, what? the next day they mourn. This is exactly what I just said. Yeah. Just repeat. Look at. Then after the day of mourning is called the day of blood. Castration rituals would take place. Told you. The tree is symbolically buried. B- buried for his death. And then look at look at the third day. Count from the day of mourning to the day of uh, of joy. Yep. The twenty second to the twenty fifth. Three days. That's three days later. Just like Jesus is dead for th- on the third day he rises. Oh God, look, the dude. day of joy on March twenty fifth. The resurrection of Addis. Now you're gonna sit there and tell me this has this didn't influence Christianity? Get the out of here! You're, you are full. Of, these Christian scholars in the SBL Society of Bible Literature full of sh. They know this and don't care. So does it say anywhere anywhere on this page where what part in history in the human time or the the, his, the timeline of history where this started? 200 BC. Where does it say that here? Well, that's when they that's when they imported the god to Rome. 
Uh, and by the way, yeah, if you read the source that actually has the calendar, the guy who wrote that it was living probably in this. I, I don't remember when exactly, but yeah, this is this was a okay, festival the, that started the, the writing in the fourth century. Yeah, that's AD. when he's writing this though. Oh, he's a Christian. Okay, yeah. described the basic multi-day structure of the festivals as it relates to the myth of Sibylle and Attis. Um, but so. Yeah, that's but that's when the Christians are writing about this. Right. That's when the Christians are writing about it. The, okay. If you look at when the importation of the cult of Sibylle happens in 204 BCE. Oh, click on Sibylle. Yeah, click on Sibylle. Where, that's a good. Yeah, that's where you're going to find very it. bottom. Yeah, oh, right see. there. Right there. Yes, yes. Okay. Sibylle. God, this is a lot of work to figure out the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It is. It is. No, you're asking good questions. Look, look right there. 205 BCE. Keep going down. Oh, yeah. The very bottom. Okay. In Look. Rome, Sibylle became known as the Magna Mater, gr the Great Mother, a Roman state adopted and developed in particular f uh, in a particular form of her cult after the Sibylline Oracle in 205 BC. That's when they started doing this thing. Recommended her conscription as a key religious ally in Rome's second war against Carthage, 218 to 201 BC. So that's when they imported her cult. Okay. In two, okay. In 205 BC. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then they were writing about it at 300 AD. Yeah. But that's, that's that, that Christian source is the source that we have to go off. Right. That's it, how it was really happened. We have to go through the Christians for almost everything. And they kept, so they kept repurposing this ritual. Sure. Throughout throughout time like from yeah. there up until christianity that's when that's when it becomes a roman religion in 204 bc 205 i thought it was 204 wow dude but that's when they start doing that that's when the rituals all start can you find a like any sort of picture or illustration of that ritual like a, like on images like yeah maybe, if you maybe type, maybe in tree. Addis, type in Addis tree you'll see there's there is a someone drew a someone someone from that time period drew something on this yeah look there, 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 right there wow. yeah but, they, so there's but a little this, this was a Phrygian. This was a Phrygian religion before Roman religion. And they're hanging. There's they're hanging things from this yeah, pine tree. See, it looks like a little Christmas tree. By wow. the way, the Phrygians. The Phrygians go back to the Bron. Uh, they're they're from Anatolia. That's an ancient rite that goes back to the Hittites. They worship the Great Mother in the Hittite period, Bronze Age. So that's an her. I don't know how when Addis comes in. Mm -hmm. I would say probably around probably sometime in the Iron Age, but in the Bronze Age before that. Uh, Sibylle or Kubaba they called it back then that's mm -hmm. how old it is she was worshipped by the Hittites Kubaba what is the isn't there a relationship between uh, Christmas and the Amanita Muscaria mushroom yeah yeah 